All right, this is number five from the Calc AB 2010 exam, and uh, it's one of those where you're given a graph of the derivative, and you have to you have to find all kinds of things about it. Um, so the first thing is we need to find g of three, and by the fundamental theorem, that should be g of zero plus the integral from zero to three of g prime of x dx. Um, so we're told g of zero is five, and now we're going to use some geometry. Um, so this is a circle of radius two. So the full circle would have a uh, area of 4 pi, but we only need a quarter of it, so that's pi. Um, so that's going to be part of it. And then this is a little triangle here, which has a base of 1 and a height of 3, so it has an area of 3 halves. Um, so we just add those values. And that's our answer for g of 3. Uh, g of negative 2, just to make us go backwards, I guess. So same idea. Um, g of negative 2 will be g of 0 minus the integral from negative 2 to 0 of g prime of x dx. So uh, g of 0 is still 5. And then we uh, do this geometrically as well. And we get that the area of that region is pi again. So we're going to subtract pi. And those are our answers. Um, so we can kind of breeze through part A here. Um, part B, we're looking for points of inflection. And we know that the points of inflection of g of x um, show themselves on g prime as relative extrema. So let's just jot that down because that'll be our reasoning. So the points of inflection of g of x are relative extrema of g prime. And then we just go through and look for the relative extrema. Therefore, g of x has a point of inflection at x equals. Uh, the first one I see is 0. So x equals 0. The next one is at 2. Uh, remember, g prime doesn't need to be differentiable with these points. It just needs to have a relative extrema. Um, and they almost always throw in one where it's not differentiable, because I guess some people live with that uh, false belief. So we get all of those. And we move on to part c. Part c is a little challenging, because uh, they define a new function, h of x, which is kind of curious. It's g of x minus 1 half x squared. Um, but it turns out that this isn't really that bad. Um, by construction. So we find h prime, which will just be g prime minus x. Um, and we're looking for the critical points of h of x. So that's when h prime is either zero or undefined. Um, but h prime is defined everywhere. So we're just looking for where it's zero. Well, for it to be zero, we need g prime of x to equal x. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to look at that graphically. We're going to add the line y equals x to our graph. And you can see there are actually two places where they intersect. Um, so to find the first one, uh, you might just know that it's radical 2, but if not, we write the equation of the circle, and then we know y equals x, so we know that x squared is 2, and we know that x is radical 2, so that's one of the values. And then the other one is obviously 3, just by looking. Um, now we have to determine if they are relative max, min, or neither. Um, so what we're going to do... Um, it definitely has a relative max, it being h of x, has a relative maximum at x equals radical 2, but we need to figure out why. So h prime will be positive if you look at the way that h prime is defined here. h prime is going to be positive anytime g prime is bigger than x. So on this interval, um, g prime, which I've just highlighted there, is definitely greater than x, which is the line y equals x there. Um, so it's, uh, h prime is positive there. And then by the same argument, negative on that interval, because g prime is clearly below y equals x. Um, so we change from positive to negative. So that is a relative maximum. So let's jot that down. And then we need to talk about 3. Well, uh, nothing happens at 3. Um, so it's neither a maximum nor a minimum. Um, and that's because... There's just no sign chain. So if you look at it, um, we start off below. So you have g prime is less than x, so uh, h prime is negative there. Uh, then at 3, it's 0, but then after 3, it's negative again. So it doesn't have a sign change. Um, so that's the whole idea. Uh, this problem is a lot easier. Actually, all of this question is kind of making you use geometry. Um, and so I hope you're kind of comfortable with that and you realize that you did not need to write any equations for these and use, uh, you know, the fundamental theorem. We use the concept of the fundamental theorem, but not algebraically applying it. Um, all right, so that's it, and I hope you found this helpful. Good luck.